Hey, welcome to my channel. So recently I was given a little bit of advice by one of the, I think, 40 people who actually watch the videos that I make while wearing Lolita fashion. Thank you very much, by the way, for watching these videos. I love wearing Lolita fashion. It is my favorite thing to wear. And I feel like it doesn't get enough attention on my channel. And I would love to do more videos in Lolita fashion, but it is really hard to get views on these videos. For whatever reason, I don't even know why, but they felt that any video where the person loves Alita fashion and wears Alita fashion should be inherently about or refer directly to Lolita fashion. In other words, it should be meta. So because of that, I decided to make a meta vlog today. <laughs> First of all, I would like to respond to the reasons why my other videos where I'm wearing Lolita fashion are not inherently about Lolita fashion, how to wear it, where to find it, or any other advice pertaining to Lolita fashion. When I asked the community, uh, when I said, I'm thinking about starting a vlog where I wear Lolita fashion, and I gave some suggestions and ideas as to what I felt I should do. The community overwhelmingly did not want to see me beat a dead horse and make a channel that was about Lolita fashion or about wearing it. Overwhelmingly, they said they want to see regular vloggers do regular channels while wearing Lolita fashion and to just normalize the fashion and to just allow people in their maturity <laughs> to understand that it's just what I'm wearing and it is to me a normal thing to wear and there is no reason why I should have to explain what I'm wearing to anyone, whether they're interested in the fashion or not. I don't feel on my channel like I should have to explain what I'm wearing to you, nor do I want to. There are plenty of YouTubers who have done that. They've covered it quite clearly and coherently. They've made some beautiful, wonderful, easy to access videos about Lolita fashion and how to wear it. I don't feel like I need to cover that subject again. And if that bothers anyone, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I really feel strongly about this. I want to create the fashion slash comedy comment content. I want to create the fashion slash comedy content that I love to create and continue creating it and also wear the fashion that I love without either being judged for the fashion or being judged for not talking about what I'm wearing. That said, I really would love to become a Lolita fashion guru with like five bazillion viewers. So what I did was I went because I wanted to see what it was that this person who was criticizing, what people who are criticizing my channel or me wearing Lolita fashion wanted me to do. So I looked at the most popular Lolita fashion channels, the most popular videos that I've already seen. I watched them again and I came up with the five obligatory Lolita fashion videos that you have to make in order to be allowed to call yourself a Lolita fashion channel. So I am going to make all five of them into one video and then I'm never going to make another video about what I'm wearing again and I'm sorry if that doesn't mesh with what you want to see people doing on YouTube. Um, but it's my channel and you are welcome to create your own. Video number one, why I wear Lolita fashion. Why do I wear Lolita fashion? <laughs> Look at this, why, how could you not? the incredibly mature, well thought out and reasonable reason why I wear Lolita fashion is because I dream about ponies, I wake up thinking about ponies, and I need to have ponies on my dress. Video number two, makeup for Lolita fashion. Oh, 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 I think I can, no, it, oh, oh. I give up. I'm just gonna level with you. I chose Lolita fashion because it was such an innocent and cute fashion and also inherently because I am not very good at makeup and I thought like I'm wearing a cute dress and it'll probably detract from my inability to do my makeup. I know other U Lolita YouTubers and oh my God, so many others. They have these amazing looks on their faces and I'm honestly just like, how? Um, I tend to wear more sweet and innocent looks because of it because I just don't, sometimes just don't put anything on my face. 
um, because it gets so frustrating. So me doing a makeup video would literally be 45 minutes of me poking myself in the eye with like every possible thing and it would be uncomfortable for me and it would definitely be uncomfortable for you. Hairstyles for Lolita Fashion would be the third obligatory Lolita Fashion video. And I have seen this covered by Misako, by Lovely Lore, by people way better at hairstyles for Lolita Fashion than me, but I'm going to show you the five hairstyles I wear. This is number one. I literally just take my hair. <laughs> drop everything. I literally just take my hair. I put it in two braids. I fold them over like this, tie them in a loop. Super common. And then you just put a um, bow to cover the elastic. Hairstyle number two is super controversial. Every time I wear my hair like this, I get so much backlash within the community and I can't even do it today because my hair is flaccid because of the wind, but sometimes we get really windy days around here. So I put my hair in curls and then I just fluff it out and it has this really big, I think fun balance sort of kind of like windy, windswept style, and I just leave it down, and this is probably the style that I see um, scarfing scarves, I guess, wearing most often. And then maybe I'll stick in a bow or two or something like that, if I want to be fancy. That's if I want, if I would like my hair to be a different color, shade, or shape, I usually go with a wig. This is one of my favorite ones. If you had seen any of my cords, you've probably seen this one. It is weirdly styled right now. I think it's got hair clips in it, but anyway, I just throw that on my head and brush it out and yeah, ready to go. And I think a lot of Lolitas do this. It definitely saves you time at a con. Um, this wig is extremely, extremely comfortable, so I can wear it all day. It has bangs for when I don't have, I don't always have bangs, so it always has bangs. I'm putting it on really poorly in front of a camera right now, but yeah. So this is one of my favorite wigs. I think I have five or six different wigs, so blue, purple, pink. Um, so just a lot of various different colors and honestly that's usually what I do is just kind of wear a wig like a hat. I do find that a lot of Lolita accessories are also made to fit around wigs, not necessarily made to fit around natural hair. Um, also I do that when my bangs aren't laying down flat. I do have curly hair naturally and some days it's just so fluffy and so, well I don't have curly hair naturally, I have like this wavy curl, I don't know what you'd describe that as, but basically sometimes it is just so wavy and so fluffy that it just kind of and I can't do anything with it, you know what I mean? And I also have like a fake bun that'll sometimes like stick on the side of my head for fun. I don't know, that's that's basically it. That, that, that's the extent. So again, if I were to do Lolita hairstyle videos, I am well aware that I really have three or four go-to hairstyles that I like on me that may or may not look good on anyone else and that might definitely not look good on certain people. And that is why in Lolita, it's so important to develop your own style and not let anyone tell you what to wear or how to wear it because there are going to be styles, silhouettes, dresses that look good on you that don't look good on someone else. There are dresses that I've seen on someone else that looks so cute and so amazing. And on me, they just didn't look good. I think that a fashion like Lolita is about being yourself and developing your style and being who you are within that fashion. And there is, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel confident. I don't think I ever will. I've been in this fashion for a very long time, more than six years. And I don't feel confident to tell you how to wear it because those are your clothes. They're not my clothes. It's your closet, not my closet. Obligatory Lolita fashion video number four, do's and don'ts of Lolita fashion. video is of course the one where I get up and put on every last one of my dresses. The torture video. <laughs> I think the reason why these Lolita wardrobe videos are so popular for Lolitas to make and also to watch is obviously because it reveals like the amazing dresses that you may not have seen this year or you might find a new dream dress. But for the person making it, I can't help but notice that at the beginning of the video, they're always like, 
Oh my God, that was so hard and I'm so tired. It took me so long to make, but I finally made this wardrobe reveal video. It's late, all this kind of stuff. And I think there's a reason for that. Like honestly, it takes me between two to six hours to put on a full Lolita cord in it and do my makeup and my hair, get my nails done all nice, you know, and like feel confident to have that I have a really nice outfit and I want to go out and I want to take photos. And so just the act of just throwing my dresses on without really coordinating them or putting anything in my hair or doing anything with them seems ouch. But also because I am a YouTuber and I have a lot of videos on my phone, on my, on my drive, you know, like I have a lot of videos saved. I really don't have space on my phone, on my drive, on any of my like thumb drives, I don't have space to save like one Lolita cord here, a Lolita cord there, a Lolita cord here until I get videos of all of my full coordinates. So I feel like I have a choice to either go through my wardrobe and show you my dresses flat, um, which I don't really like that option, or I have the choice to throw them on without the accessories just over a petty wearing the same pair of tights the whole time. And um, for some reason, that's the option I chose. So please enjoy my little wardrobe. We'll see how many of my dresses I get through because honestly, um, I don't have a very high attention span. It's not very high at all. This is one of my favorite dresses. It is Candy Bottle by Metamorphose Tante de Fee. It has obviously candy bottles on it, hence the name. I usually wear it with this burgundy, which shows up red on every video for some reason, a little uh, Bolero from Axis Femme. It's one of my favorite summer coordinates, and I will also wear it with a blouse in winter and a sweater, and I do have photos of that somewhere, but whatever. Uh when I am not styling it as Lolita fashion because I'm going to a con or something, I definitely will just take off whatever headdress I'm wearing because it's summer and wear it with this little country hat and my jibanyan. So get used to it because I don't always wear Lolita fashion properly. I don't think anyone does. I think that for the purposes of a video or a photo, you probably do. But when you're at home with your jibanyan, you just, you just do what you want. This is Angelic Pretty's Milky Pony Carnival. I obviously love it because it has ponies on it. Carousel prints are absolutely my favorite prints. I collect them like crazy. I love Black Sweet. And so this is one of my favorite dresses. I usually wear it with like a purple or pink wig because this bow is so huge. This is a meta bow, but it's really huge. And I think it is meant to go on over a wig because it, it like, <laughs> it's making me a liar, but it falls off if you like kind of let it fall around too much. Now, I know you guys can't see my socks and shoes right now. Honestly, I'm not filming them because I just want to throw the dresses on and I don't want to have to put shoes and the whole tights on too. So I'm like still wearing my red tights and like they don't match the cord. So yeah, so just dresses today. Okay, so that's Milky Pony Carnival. The only thing I don't like about certain AP dresses, well, I do like and don't like about certain AP dresses, is they're made of this kind of like shiny, thin kind of like parachute fabric. And I do, I like it for summer because it's a very thin fabric. But on the other hand, it can feel or read as cheap to some people. And because of that, sometimes people will think you're wearing a costume in AP, but I love it and I think it's great for summer and in winter they use obviously other fabrics, so. Okay, this is Innocent World Planisphere and there is backstory to this dress because I had bid on, I actually put the socks on even though I've got my red tights, so don't ever do this. Don't put your socks over your tights. I'm giving you pearls here, but I put the socks on because these socks like go with it so perfectly. So what happened was I had purchased what I thought was a Wonder Planetarium on a uh, lace market and it turned out to be a fake. It was like a million fake. And I was so upset because I'd already bought all these coordinates to it, especially this little round bag with like the, you know, what are they called? Constellations printed on it. And then I had made this like little headdress with a little cute bow and I didn't get it. So it took me three years to find a new dress to replace it. And I actually love Planisphere more because of the fact that it's got the little spherical globes on the dress that perfectly match this bag. It was like it was meant to be. And I was so happy to find it. And even whenever I go out on this one, I get so many compliments. because They're like, oh my God, where did you get that bag? I don't even know because I got it at a tiny little secondhand shop and like just randomly. 
and I don't know if you can actually find it again, but anyway, I was so excited to just have all the pieces to this cord and it really kind of was a salve in the wound of what I had lost and I actually like it. I know this is going to be contentious, but I actually like it better than Wonder Planetarium, so I was super excited to have this dress. So this is kind of no name dress from Atelier Pierrot. It is one of my favorite JSKs because of actually the bustle skirt in the back. I really love good bustle skirt. It takes a really big petty because it's got a really big skirt. Uh, I love wearing this coat with it. Most of my outerwear is Axis Femme Poetique. Um, I just love their stuff and this particular one has a rain cover which, which by the way is what this is called. So in Britain they make coats like this. My grandmother explained it to me because she's British and she always sent me coats uh, around Christmas time and around fall and what it is is like it's a little kind of a bustle that actually keeps your shoulder and that sort of thing from getting wet and you can take this off and hang it to dry more easily than you can dry the rest of the coat. Anyway, and it also keeps the windows apparently, but this particular one has a sweet little teapot on it and that is 90% of why I love it. And I love the roses on this. I like the Rochelle, I think this is, no, this is a chiffon. Um, and just love it. I just love it. I don't know, I don't know how else to put it. It's got this chiffon back and then it has velveteen in the bodice and it is one of my favorite dresses to wear around Christmas, around Valentine's Day, in fall and in spring, and it actually matches the tights I'm wearing, so that's also good. <laughs> this is, I can't remember, I wanna say Wonder Carousel. It is Metamorphose. It has these little um, uh, carousel horses on it, and I bought this one. This one is part of a journey because every horse on this carousel actually exists. So for example, this little tiger right here is actually from a, um, a carousel horse in Manhattan in New York City. I love carousels, I actually love them. And so me and this dress are going to go on a journey, not this year, obviously we're gonna go this year, but we didn't get to, to find all of the horses on this carousel and sit on them wearing this dress. I usually wear it with my little popcorn bag because most carousels do have a popcorn stand or they're surrounded by a fairground. And I just find it to be a really fun, like little dress to wear to the fairground. And I usually actually do keep my snacks in here and people find that funny. Um, uh, now, <laughs> caution, wearing the lead on a fairground, people will think you're one of the performers and you're just gonna have to be able to laugh it off and kind of live with that. So anyway, here's the back. It's got like a little waist tie too. Sometimes I tie it up here, but it doesn't have a big bow in the front. So I usually do tie it in the back. Obviously it's not properly tied right now, um, but this is how I'd wear it. I would definitely wear it with my hair kind of crazy and with like a very small headdress because I do like to have this dress speak for itself. It's already very, um, it's already got a really nice print on it. And yeah, so I tend to just like wear it with my little stripey popcorn purse that matches the stripes at the bottom. <laughs> and I think this is one of my A1 favorite dresses, but you know, to an extent, they're all my favorite dress and I can never decide which one to wear or not wear. So I just kind of wear whatever. <laughs> Fantasy Parade. I haven't worn this in a hot minute because I tend to wear it more in winter and I'm looking for kind of a vest to wear with it or something to kind of snazz it up. Uh, but I'll show you how I wear it in winter. I've worn it mostly in winter so I haven't coordinated it with sweaters or cardigans much. Um, this uh, coat, this is my winter coat. It is from a company called Marble and this is what I wear all winter regardless of what I'm wearing underneath it. It is a very comfortable, very warm coat, and it has, of course, a big bustle in the back. So you can kind of see how my fantasy parade is usually worn. It's usually worn kind of peeking out of the bottom of this big coat with like the bonnet showing up here. And I think it's just a very cute, very elegant look. And I really love wearing a skirt this way um, with just about any top. I am going to be buying a, like a black, a new black blouse. So the black blouse that I had got something spilled on it, like bleach or something, and it had something on the sleeve. So that's why I don't have like a longer sleeve black blouse right now. I don't know why I'm explaining that to you. Point is, this is how I usually wear fancy parade.
not the last one, but definitely the last one I'm gonna put on today. This is from Axis Femme, and it's one of my favorite summer dresses. I will either coordinate it with red, and I have little coral accessories uh, that look like this red coral on the bottom. I guess the reason I bought this dress was because the red coral on the bottom looks like this red, I don't know how to describe it, it's a plant that grows in the water, it's like a red lichen, and when we're at the beach, I grew up at the beach, we take this stuff and we kind of wrap it around our wrists and we wrap it around our necks and be like, oh, I'm a pretty mermaid, look at my jewelry. And this just reminded me of that, and I do have jewelry that actually matches this uh, little red coral, so so that's why I bought it and I always wear it with this Jane Marple rain hat which everyone hates every time I post this cord people are like oh my god I hate that hat that's not even a little what's wrong with you I don't know what's wrong with me but I love this hat and I'm never taking it off with this cord so sue me I'm gonna keep posting it but anyway it is plastic and it's actually waterproof it is from Jane Marple and it has this little lace on it and I just love it and I love wearing it because this is inherently a sailor dress and this is the kind of sailor hat that I would wear um, at any time uh, and yeah so this is the back this one is by Axis Femme I know within the Lolita community there's a lot of back Actually, Axis Femme isn't Lolita I agree that some Axis Femme stuff isn't Lolita but this dress is and I can wear all the petty I want under it so I do wear it for Lolita you know what guys, honestly, that's not all of them, but that is all I'm willing to put on today. I'm so tired just from putting these on and taking these off. Kudos to you who do these videos regularly, like Lolita try on videos, Lolita haul videos. I can't do it, I'm tired. If you made it this far, thank you for so much. If you made it this far, thank you. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching my five videos squished into one. I'm so happy that you're here. I will be making lots of videos wearing Lolita fashion because I love to wear Lolita fashion, but I will not on this channel ever again be making another video justifying Lolita fashion, talking about why I wear it or making any excuses for what I'm wearing to the general public. I don't feel that Lolita fashion is a subversive fashion anymore. When I go out wearing it and I do try to explain it to people, they end up explaining it to me. I was Right before COVID happened, I was at a booth selling my organizers. Of course, I'm talking about the whole year planner. Pick it up on Amazon. It's like a little Bujo format and I just really love it. You can fill in the pages yourself. Plug, 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 shameless self-promotion. Uh, it comes with a companion book, which I think is great for cons and getting signatures and stuff called A Whole Bunch of Blank Paper, which is exactly what it says it is, a whole bunch of blank paper. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I was at the booth and this young girl, I'm maybe a high school aged girl, she comes up and she started talking to me about the book and her mom wanted to buy it for her. And nobody really asked what I was wearing, but she was kind of looking at me and I was like, no, I, I didn't even say what I was wearing. That's like, I don't even know how the conversation got started. This is like two years ago and my brain is like, Pfft. But anyway, she literally told me that I was wearing Lolita fashion because I was like, oh, you're looking at what I'm wearing. And I went to explain it. And she's like, no, I know it's Lolita fashion. I just, I think it's really cute. And I wanted to get into it. And she started just sort of like asking me about shopping services and stuff like that. It was clear that she had seen other videos about Lolita fashion. She was very savvy about it. She knew everything there was to know about it. It's Googleable now. It's, I wouldn't say it's mainstream, but it's Googleable. People can find the information. They don't need it from me. And I understand that. So as a Lolita, I want to grow with this community and talk about and do other things and live my life without feeling harshly limited to producing Lolita only content while I'm wearing Lolita dresses. Again, thank you so much for watching my video. Have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic week. Stay safe out there and stay healthy. Bye.